Good morning, St. Albans, and welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist for the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and our minds to we inwardly enter into the worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said again, I did not call him. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. So Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls to you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went, went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. 
And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of, the, of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there till morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of, of the Lord. Samuel was afraid due to, to, to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, And what, what is it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and, he, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Don Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in praying Psalm 139. We will pray responsibly. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sins and my heart when I rise me up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and resting places. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before. And lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your work is wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. My heart is made in the spirit, and all the human depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when I discovered there were none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more than the number in the number of the sand. To count them all, my life span would be to me like yours. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do, not, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never do you know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh, but anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that one person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and you are 
not your own. For you were brought, bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to them, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Many cities and towns, regardless of size, often make some kind of claim to fame. Elkhorn, where I served before coming here to St. Albans, calls itself the Christmas card town, owing to a TV program highlighting all of their Christmas decorations back in the 1950s. Milwaukee is known as the Brew City, reflecting the importance of the brewing industry on Milwaukee's history and culture. Of course, the Milwaukee Brewers are a living testimony to that heritage. My hometown, Peoria, is known for something too. I'm sure you've all heard the expression, will it play in Peoria? That goes back to the days of vaudeville, when touring performers traveled across the country going from town to town. The Peoria audience apparently was known for being pretty hard to please. Hence, if a performance played well in Peoria, it would probably play well anywhere. As I said, many cities and towns have, or at least would like to make some kind of claim to fame. Chicago is the Windy City, New York's the Big Apple. There's a little town just north of Peoria called Henry, Illinois, which claims to be the best little town by a dam site, referring to the fact that a large dam on the Illinois River is located there. In our Gospel lesson this morning from John, Jesus is just beginning to call the disciples. According to John, Jesus' hometown, Nazareth, apparently didn't have much of a claim to fame or even a very good reputation. John relates how Philip, who had just been called by Jesus to become a disciple, went to invite Nathanael to come and meet Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth Nathanael responded, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Apparently, Jesus wasn't too offended by Nathaniel's low opinion of his hometown, because when he saw Nathaniel approaching, he said, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. He saw a man who was not afraid to say what he believed. Jesus wasn't concerned with superficial things. He wasn't concerned about where Nathaniel came from. And he wasn't concerned about what Nathaniel thought about where he came from. He was more concerned with the character of the person. When Jesus looked at Nathaniel, he saw an honest man. But he must have seen more than honesty alone. The honesty he saw was born of courage. 
a courage which would be open to new possibilities, to new relationships, and to a new life. And that was important because that was just what Jesus was calling Nathaniel and Philip and Andrew and Peter and all those new disciples too. A new and a different life than anything they had ever imagined. When Jesus called Nathaniel, Nathaniel was surprised because Jesus acted like he'd known him for a long time, yet they had never met. In our lesson from the book of Samuel this morning, we heard how the Lord called the young boy Samuel. Samuel didn't know the ways of the Lord, so he was confused when he heard the Lord calling. Samuel may not have known the Lord yet, but the Lord certainly knew Samuel. Just like Nathaniel and Jesus, Nathaniel didn't know Jesus, but Jesus knew Nathaniel. God knew Samuel and Nathaniel better than they knew themselves. As Psalm 139 tells us this morning, the Lord knew them and he has known each of us long before we were born. We begin each celebration of the Eucharist with a prayer for purity, which we pray, in which we pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. God knows each of us, and he knows each of us fully. He knows us completely, and he always has, and he always will. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our hopes. He knows our fears. He knows our dreams. And He knows our sorrows. There is nothing in us or about us which He doesn't know. Yet, this intimate knowledge is not an invasion of our privacy. It is an all-encompassing gift. Because this intimate knowledge is matched only by God's intimate and infinite love. This may be one of the hardest things for people to realize, to really get their head around. Even for folks who have been going to church for years. We are fully known by God and we are fully loved by God. Jesus knew and loved Nathaniel while he was still leaning against the fig tree. Jesus, God knew and loved the boy Samuel while he was still asleep on the floor. God knows and loves you and me right here, right there, right wherever we are. God knows and loves every person on this earth, on this earth regardless of their hometown. But not everybody knows and loves God. Nathaniel and Samuel were known and loved by God. But more than that, they were called by him to communicate that knowledge of God and his all-encompassing love to the rest of the world. Like Nathaniel and Samuel, we are fully known and completely loved by God. And like them, we are called to share our knowledge of God's love with the world around us. To the all-knowing and all-loving God, the all-honor and glory now and forever. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God from not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and the infant of man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his king will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Dear sisters and brothers, we are marvelously made by the Maker of all things, to whom we offer our prayers, responding to each petition by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to religious life, especially in our Anglican and Episcopal communities, that we may give thanks to those who, are joyfully, in, who joyfully embrace lives of prayer and simplicity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may honor our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit, not succumbing to the values of our culture, but by respecting ourselves and one another as vessels of God's divine presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may follow Jesus' great commission to heal the sick and preach the word, bearing witness to others of the fruits of a lively faith and the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in the armed forces, that they may be protected in their mission and return safely to waiting families and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our leaders may commit themselves to forming bonds of peace, that war may cease in the world, so that the most needy will have security and resources that lead to an abundant life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in the faith of, may pass over to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Guided by the light of Christ shining in our hearts, we continue our prayers. For all who are stricken with COVID-19, for all whose care, who care for them, and for all who are struggling with loneliness in this time of necessary social isolation. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayer, especially Carrie, Melissa, Tim, Sarah, Bev, Sherry Ann, Maris, Mary Beth, Carolyn Ann, Jim, Jeremy, Regs, Richard. Are there others? For our country in this time of transition that it may be accomplished with peace and a sense of renewal. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish, for the people in parish of St. Peter's in Fort Atkinson. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the families of Judy Price, Gloria Rodans, and Regs and Pat Sheeler. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the cooperating churches of Sussex and the community we serve together and especially for the volunteers who continue to serve during this difficult time. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Diocesan Haiti Project and the people and parish of St. Mark's and Jeanette, Haiti. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We rejoice with Barb Mangifico, Bob Simon, and M Michelle Knapp, who are celebrating the anniversary of their birth this week. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, and grant that we may attain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry if we come to repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God. Jesus, your Son, 
For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this to the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles Philip and Nathaniel, the Prophet Samuel, and our patron Alban, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy ministries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now, with a blessing, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, <coughs> be upon you and remain with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.